Today we'll be reviewing the Echo 3068 Silent sent over for review by Epo Maker. If you have seen my review on the Echo Neon 3061, I thought it was a really good board and one of the best pre-built keyboards that I've reviewed so far on the channel. So I am excited to review this keyboard today to see if those high expectations will be met once again. The Echo 3068 Silent is the 65% version in the Echo line and has been around for quite a while now. But the one we got for review today is an updated version so we'll be taking a look at what is different from the older versions. So the Echo 3068 comes at a price of $109.99 with their choice of Gateron switches. This is one of the first changes from its previous version which had cherry switches. You can debate whether this is really an upgrade as switches are a preferential thing. Some people like myself may prefer the nicer sound that a cherry housing provides, while others might prefer the smoother Gateron switches. Moving on to the unboxing, you get a dust cover, the keyboard, user manual, accent keycaps, USB-C cable, and a keycap puller. Taking a look at what switches we got today, it seems that we have received the Gateron oranges. We have seen these previously on the Echo Neon 3061, and although they seem to be somewhat new, they're not anything that will be game changing in the Switch scene. They feel pretty similar to Gateron Browns, but one thing that I found while looping them on the Echo Neon 3061 is that their housing seemed to be pretty tight, unlike regular Gateron Switches. Moving on to the keycaps, the look is based on the iconic muted colorway. This is why the keyboard has the term silent in its name, because I guess they were trying to be sneaky about using the muted colorway without copying word for word. But this confused a lot of people as they thought the silent meant that the keyboard was going to come with silent switches, which it does not. Anyways, let's put the accent keycaps on and see how they look. I like how they included both blue and purple, but I really dislike the Echo logo. I wish they included more accent keycaps like in the Neon 3061 so that I could use something else, but this is not the case here. Looking at the keycaps themselves, they are an OEM profile unlike the Echo Neon 3061 which had Cherry profile. Most gaming keyboards use OEM profile, so if you're new to mechanical keyboards, this should be pretty familiar to you. Personally, although OEM and Cherry profile are similar, I prefer Cherry profile. This is not that big of a deal for me and I can use either perfectly fine. However, what is a big deal for me though, is that the way it looks with LEDs on. These keycaps are made up of PVT thermal sublimation, which is nice in helping the keycaps last longer. But they look terrible with the LEDs on. They have this cheap shine through look, and I'm not sure if this was the look that they were going for. It's a shame because LEDs are on by default, and although you can always turn them off, I'd rather have them not put the LEDs on this keyboard or have better keycaps that don't shine the light through like these. Also the modifier keycaps don't seem to shine through, only the alphas, and I'm confused why this is what they ended up going with. Moving on, the stabilizers on this keyboard are pretty good. They're not mind blowing to me like the Echo Neon 3061, but they're solid. They have a red housing, which is a weird choice to me since the keyboard accents are blue and purple. It would have been nice if they matched like the Echo Neon 3061, but anyways, let's take a listen and see how they sound. Looking at what else changed from the previous version to this one other than the switch options, I've noticed that the case color changed from black to gray. I think that this is an appropriate choice as it helps complement the keycaps more. In addition, another major change is the Bluetooth. The Bluetooth, which was a 3.0 in the previous model, is now a 5.0. 
This will allow for a faster connection with lower energy. With everything out of the way now, let's take a listen to how this keyboard sounds. So, what are my thoughts on this keyboard? I came in today with really high expectations having previously reviewed the Aconeon 3061. However, I'm a bit disappointed with the 3068 Silent. I had a better experience reviewing the Aconeon 3061 as some of the aspects on the 3068 Silent felt cheap to me like the LEDs. Overall, Aconeon 3061 just did a lot of little things better like including more accent keys and having a bit better stabilizer that made me prefer it over the 3068 Silent. You can hear a lot of ping on this keyboard as well, that you can probably fix with some sound dampening foam, but I wish that this was a thing that companies address themselves. In addition, hot swap on Prevo keyboards is almost becoming a standard now, so it feels weird when a board does not have it. Gateron oranges definitely have some spring ping, so they could benefit from lubing, but this is not possible without desoldering here. Therefore, the typing experience isn't that great overall, as it feels a bit crunchy. That being said, I'll still put the links down in the description if you want to check the product out. If you enjoyed today's content, feel free to hit the like and subscribe button. I have some exciting mechanical keyboard content coming, including some stuff from Kinetic Labs, that you definitely do not want to miss. And as always, my socials will be down in the description as well, so come interact with me on there. Until next time, stay safe and take care.